Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Well, shocker today, we've got a rehousing on deck. Seriously, I have a lot of spiders that I have to rehouse in the coming weeks. I actually have a vacation coming up that's going to be totally devoted to rehousing a lot of the guys I've been putting off because I haven't had the time. This time, we're going to be looking at one of my Zenestis species, Zenestis intermedia, to be more precise, or the Amazon Blue Bloom, I think it's called. This is a beefy terrestrial from Venezuela, and it's one of the giants with females reaching eight inches or more. So this can be a big, hefty spider. They are also gorgeous. And as you'll see in a moment, this one is showing its adult coloration, and I just don't think striking is a strong enough word. So enough of me talking. Let's take a peek at Zenestis Intermedia, and here's some notes on its care. All right, so we're about to rehouse my Zenestis Intermedia, or Amazon Blue Bloom. I think that's what it is. Amazon Blue Bloom, that sounds about right. Picked this one up in August of 2020 from Fear Not Tarantulas. It was actually, I think, a little closer to the end of July, and I think we might have posted the video in August. But at that point, she was about, uh, I'm saying she, I tried to get the molt out and sex it, and it was torn to pieces. But I'm going with she, was about two inches or so. I'm flashing up some pictures of her here so you can see what she looked like before and she's in the very same container that she is in now that we're about to rehouse her out of she just molted and i caught her out and about the other day and she's quite big now these guys grow rather quickly and they go from like one and a half, one and three quarters inches, they're big leggy slings to begin with, to like four and a half, five inches very, very quickly. Then they tend to slow down a little bit, almost like from myctopus. But before that, they're growing more like theraphosa species. And they look kind of like theraphosa species with their long legs. So this is the container I'm putting her into. It's one of the Sterilite 15 quart or 14 liter clear view latch enclosures. I like these for my larger terrestrials. They give a, offer a good deal of space, and for folks who are wondering why I'm putting such a pretty spider into such a blah enclosure, this is only temporary. I'm trying to see now what I have for different Zenesta species, and once I'm sure if I have some females, they will be going into beautiful enclosures that kind of go along with how beautiful the spiders are. Now, we're hoping we can get some shots of this one out because she is stunning. Billy's going to kind of poke in there and see if she can see her. Eh, I don't know if there's going to be a good shot of her in there. She's kind of hiding in her little den, but she's got a beautiful pinkish purple carapace, those velvety blackish, almost bluish tinged legs, and very, very leggy. So I'm trying to figure out how best to go about this. Oh, if you want to look at the enclosure here, what we're putting her into. And I'm not doing a full husbandry guide on this one because I just did my Zenesta species blue. The biggest difference is blues apparently come from a region where it's a little more arid, so you don't have to be so you don't have to worry so much about the humidity or the moisture. This species is from a more tropical rainforest type environment, so you want to keep it a little more moist. So what we have here is biodude substrate, some leaf litter, some nice bright green moss, obviously a water dish, and she's got a piece of cork bark in here. I've made a burrow. The species blue does spend a lot of time in her little burrow, seems to appreciate that. And the substrate, bottom layers of substrate, are more moist than I kept the species blue on. The species blue kind of has an area up here that's a little more moist, because although they come from a more arid re region, I have seen the species blue kind of hang around the water dish, which usually means they want it a little more moist. So let's try to get this one out and about. I don't know if we're doing the uh, brought to you by Simply Limeade today, only because she's pretty big leg span wise. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and I'm wearing the gloves because the hairs on these guys are at least as far. Oh boy. All right. Let's see if you can get a, a shot of her. Turn it a little bit. No. Absolutely. Gord, I obviously have a thing for purples and pinks on spiders. It's just, there's just nothing like it. I love the colors, purple and pink anyway. So to see that with those dark legs and then the bright, the kind of reddish hairs on the abdomen, just really striking spider. And I can see why for years I avoided them because they were so darn expensive, but it was one of those ones that once I know, I've said this many times, once I had one, suddenly it became very clear what I was missing. So I've had other folks that have said the same thing that they've seen some of the videos I put out and have taken a chance on them and found the same thing that they felt like they should have gotten them a long, long time ago. So what we're going to do now is try to get her into this new enclosure as stress-free a way as possible. And I'm hoping not to have her kick too much because I, I just, they look so 
pretty when they have hair on the booty as opposed to no hair on the booty. <laughs> yeah, actually, limeade it is. This is just gonna be a little trickier to get her out. All right, let's get the water dish out of here. Oh, she is not the, the cricket that I put in for her. Apparently, I wasn't sure how long ago she had molted, so I dropped the cricket in with her, but oh. right, you're gone, cricket. Ah, uh, cricket, cricket, cricket. Hold on, I really don't need this one running around the room, so we'll drop it in there. I'm not gonna lie, I might have lost a couple crickets yesterday. Can't wait for your podcast tomorrow. Mm. Gotta make sure it's stress-free. Oh, there's a little kicking. So I'm gonna try not to get Billy haired, but there she is. There's a little booty up in the air. And she, right now, the molt was about four, it looked like just under five inches or so. She's probably five and a half inches. It's tough because body size wise, if that's body size wise, sounds goofy as heck, but in terms of body, they're, they have smaller bodies, but very, very leggy. I'm gonna try to get her to stay out a little bit. No, she wants to go up, so. <laughs> She's nice and cozy. <laughs> she wants to go that way when I put her directly into her burrow. Well, man, you can see actually how, ah, she was just stretched out there. You can see how big she was. Eh. No, you're going to go out this way. No, no, no. There you go. Yeah, so hopefully she'll hang there for a second. We'll get some nice shots of her. Darn, that's pretty. I think it's just something about those dark legs with the pink carapace. It kind of makes it pop even more. And I'm hoping it's a she. Again, I dragged the molt out. I was excited because I thought I had a complete molt and the, the abdomen part that I wanted to sex was completely destroyed. So unfortunately, I couldn't get anything out of it. Now, we already talked about the fact they are fast growers, which is awesome. So those the good thing about the expensive ones, because these guys are very, very pricey. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But the thing with buying a pricey spider is a big fear is you're going to lose the spider. Not that we want to lose any spider, but it hurts sometimes even more if you've spent 200 bucks on one and to lose it. I have found they are very, very hardy. And because they eat so well, I mean, these are the ones I was talking about before. I had some footage of them where they would barrel roll when they would grab a cricket. They would hit the cricket so hard that they'd end up flipping over and ended up on their back. It was amazing. So great eaters put on a lot of size very quickly and they're big slings to start off with. So you're not going to be dealing with a teeny tiny little sling. You're going to be dealing with this really leggy inch and a half, inch and three quarter sling that will put on size and within two molts or so will be three and a half, four inches or so. So they put on a lot of size. Then again, they do slow down a little bit as they hit that like four, four and a half inch mark I've noticed. But Still, they're molting consistently and putting on a lot of size with each molt. It seems like they just, at that point, start to fill out a little more. And if you've seen pictures of the adult females, they're not nearly as gangly. I think the females kind of bulk up a little bit. So again, at the end of the video, I will include the link to the Zenestis Species Blue because they are similar enough that you could use the same care information there. There's no use beating a dead horse. We've gone over it before. But... The only difference is I would keep this one, a little, we'll keep this area a little more moist, her burrow a little more moist so she can go in there and use it if she needs some extra moisture. So there we go, Zenestis, I was going to say Zenestis species because I have so many quote unquote species. Zenestis intermedia, the Amazon blue bloom, wonderful spiders, absolutely stunning animals, fast growing, something I am, I, I am of a mind now that I think at some point any serious collector does need a Zenesta species in their collection. You need to at least keep just one of them. So again, I have a lot of Zenesta species that I have to rehouse in the future. I have a Zenesta species white, Zenesta species bright, a couple Zenesta species blue, Megascopula, Scopula, 
a bunch of them I have to rehouse. So there'll be more of these in the future because I know I've had a lot of folks ask about the care because they are expensive spiders and people want to make sure they are set up correctly. And I will be posting the care form, but the reason I didn't go all out on this one is because the care is very similar across the board. The only thing that may differ is some species like it a little more on the dry side. Some species might like a little more moisture and that's a very simple thing to gauge and to provide when you set them up. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate click the little circle right up in here if you want to check out some more videos they'll be over in here if you take the time to comment i will take the time to respond just know it may take me a couple days that'll do it for this one guys as always stay safe we'll catch you all next time